Okay, so, uh, and then we have, uh, do we have any show and tell or is it just... Oh, okay. well, you want some ice cream? You can try it. Oh, no, no. Astronaut ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Mike Fink. I'm an astronaut. Um, it sounds like cool, but it's like it's, it's my job. Um, it's uh, well, I think it's not. Because ever since I was three years old, that's all I wanted to do was be an astronaut. Um, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm here uh, from Houston, Texas, where I work at the Johnson Space Center, which is one of uh, NASA's. Uh, about this, the, the, the community college is roughly about the same size as here and uh, similar similar programs. And uh, even though um, I had a job at the Air Force uh, during the day, at night I, uh, I, I came to the classes and studied so that I could learn new things, things that I thought would help me with my career, but things that also
more opportunity you have to go do the fun stuff that you want to do. Now, everybody's own version and uh, definition of, of what they want to do is, is their own, and everybody's idea of what is fun is their own. I thought flying in space was fun, so I went out after it and, uh, and uh, was able to do that. So let me tell you about um, flying in space, because that's what you want to, you, you, you don't want me here to tell you jokes. I'll tell you about flying in space, I'm a very bad joke. So uh, flying in space is, uh, really fun. Uh, that's, that's the first paragraph. All right. Second paragraph <laughs> is that, uh, all right, so uh, what we set out to do as a country, of course, we, we had the space race in the 1960s. We were uh, racing against a country called Soviet Union. There was a race to see who would be the first, uh, who would first send people into orbit, and then who would go to the moon. And then after that, there was a, you know, who had the first space station, those kind of uh, that, that was the, those were the things that uh, I read about when I was growing up. But since then, Soviet Union broke up in 1991. It was a big surprise to the rest of the planet. And uh, so uh, our country said, well, how can we engage these, all these new Soviet republics, but especially Russia? How can we engage Russia and, and work with them and offer them, because uh, in the turmoil, their economy was going bad. People were out of uh, some serious work. We didn't want all the rocket scientists to go work for Iran or North Korea or something. We said, wait, why don't we, why don't we work with them doing something constructive? And, and at that time, we were going to build a, uh, our own space station called Space Station Freedom. And uh, uh, President Clinton, I don't know if you all remember him, he said well, uh, to his vice president, Al Gore, hey, Al, go, go make it happen. So they decided to, to combine a, a new version of Russian space station called Mir-2 with uh, with the space station freedom, and they uh, started to design the International Space Station. And so when I was applying to become an astronaut in January of 1996, uh, that the International Space Station was uh, just coming uh, close to having its first parts launched, and they were looking and saying, hey, we need to hire a whole bunch of astronauts to, uh, to, to fly aboard the International Space Station. And so during the interview, uh, they called it an interview, call this down for an interview, but most of you guys think of an interview, like, well, okay, maybe you can do an interview on Skype. No, they called us down to Houston, Texas, and the interview was a whole week long. The actual interview, talking, was like an hour, and the rest of the week was giving medical tests. So this was the funnest interview ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, they tested everything. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. I'm not talking about the, the, the nasty stuff. I'm just talking about the things like they put us into this, uh, like, this really big beach ball, and they zipped it up. Scream after 10 minutes, you weren't claustrophobic. You know, you know, tests like that. So, but it was also get a chance to to meet a lot of other interesting people and see if, if, if working at NASA would be a good fit. Which is the point of, of most interviews, right? Is to see if it, if you were if you were going to be a good fit for them and they would be a good fit for you. So anyway, at the interview, they said, "Hey, uh, 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 you, the first one, the first things they asked, they said, do you speak Russian?" I said, "Da," which is Russian. And, uh, but I was ready to hear the rest of the interview. I was prepared to hear the rest of the interview in Russian. I practiced for two weeks on how to answer any possible interview question in the Russian language. And uh, that was, I said, okay, check mark, and then moved on. I said, wait, 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 ask me some more about Russian stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, and that's the honey. And uh, so, uh, so that, was the, that was the idea to build the International Space Station. Uh, and even though we talk about a lot of Russia as our can't forget uh, that uh, we started the Space Station Freedom and the International Space Station as a partnership with Japan and the European Space Agency. So in total, we have, uh, as well as uh, Canada, so we have a total of five space powers and uh, 15 countries working together constructively to build the International Space Station. We had our first launch in 1998, and I got to be part of that, uh, the first 
is, uh, so the first modules, uh, they were being built by Russians, but they wanted we wanted to make sure they would work with the rest of the other part of the space station. So my first job as, as an astronaut was not just to train how to do a spacewalk and do all these other things, but they sent me over to Russia like half time uh, as one of the two or three people in my class that could speak Russian and help uh, get everything ready, get all the procedures in case something broke, how to fix it, and all those things. So that was a, a good training for me so that when it was my turn to fly aboard the space station, I was very really useful, especially on the Russian side, because I knew how to fix everything because I was the guy who had worked with procedures and manuals on how to fix it. So I was very lucky to know something uh, and have that opportunity. But I was also gone a lot too, so uh, what can we say? So the space station, first module, 1998, and uh, uh, along the way, we were coming, uh, going pretty quickly. We had uh, our first crews in the year 2000. Uh, we called each crew aboard the space station, we called them expeditions. And uh, well, pretty soon after the first crew, uh, was, uh, was about to launch, I got an uh, invitation to be on the, the backup to the fourth crew, so I was Expedition 4 backup, and then after that I was hoping to go fly a quick space shuttle mission, but uh, then the space shuttle uh, uh, Columbia burst apart over northern Texas in uh, 2003, so I didn't uh, get the chance to fly on the space shuttle for a while. So our Russian partners, thank goodness that uh, they were good partners, because in English we say what a friend in need is a friend in they said, oh man, that's awful. We're very sorry that your space shuttle blew up. It's probably gonna take you a while to uh, figure out what the problem is and get flying again. In the meantime, why don't you just come fly with us? And they didn't ask for any money. They didn't ask for any you know, major trade negotiations or anything. They just said, hey, we just need, we're in this together. Let's uh, wait till you get back on your feet and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. In the meantime, let's keep flying in space. So we re rearranged all the orders of our next crews and I got to go fly aboard, uh, aboard the International Space Station uh, which was my very first mission, and it was uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, um, we, uh, there was only uh, enough water and food and three supplies for two people. So it was me and one Russian guy. And my first mission, you know, in theory, the way NASA would have liked it, was a, would have been a two-week mission with a whole bunch of other Americans aboard a space shuttle to see if I was okay, and if I was good with it, then I could go fly a six-week mission. Not this time. One other Russian guy who I, uh, who I, who, uh, I knew from when we were Expedition 4 backup, and we were going to fly the Soyuz and uh, go uh, dock to the space station, stay up there, no visitors, nobody, no nothing for six months. And by the way, um, my wife was very pregnant with our second child, and I uh, had to get special permission from home. Uh, hey, honey, they moved the crews around. Can I go fly? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're I'm very pregnant. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was part of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But uh, can I go fly? I mean, when are you going to go? I'm going to be gone from April to October. You know the baby's coming in July, right? So I thought it was June. Okay, I was just checking to see if you were paying attention. Uh, and so, uh, so, yeah, you can go fly, but you owe me. And uh, that was the conversation, almost word for word. All right, so, uh, so I got the, so uh, after some training, it was uh, April of uh, 2004, and I found myself sitting on a launch pad uh, in Kazakhstan actually outside here in the desert, it doesn't look that much different than the, than the great uh, central deserts of Central Asia, uh, although they, the, 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 the feet of camels are out here from what I can tell. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, we're sitting on the, in the launch pad in the middle of a desert in Kazakhstan on a, at a Russian launch site on a Russian rocket. And I said, you know what, when I was three years old and I wanted to go fly in space, I never imagined that I would be at the other end of the world on a, on a, on a Soviet Russian rocket uh, in the middle of Kazakhstan, and, uh, and up until the, the point of when they hit the launch, you know, the button, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch, up until that point, I thought for sure it was like it was so surreal, it was like the dream that I felt that someone was going to knock on the hatch, and Gennady, the commander, would open up and say, Saha, yes, and, and they would look at me, point, and say, you, you made a mistake, get out. I thought for sure that was going to happen, I thought for sure, it's Gonna go wrong. Something's gonna go wrong. All of a sudden, they start counting down. It's like, okay, maybe this is gonna happen. And then we launch, and it was the coolest feeling. All right. So we start at zero miles an hour. You end up at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. Actually, a Russian rocket, eight hour, eight minutes and forty-five seconds. All right. So you, so, uh, and you're, you're sitting there, and you get, there's enough acceleration that you're actually pushed back in your seat. And the acceleration builds, but you know, it ends up only being like three and a half G's. That's not a lot. Uh, flying in uh, Air Force airplanes, F-16s, F-16s, you know, I've flown seven, eight, nine Gs. Now that's a lot. Three Gs, three and a half, no problem. Especially if you're going to space. That's really cool. So we, we, it takes eight hour, eight, eight hours, eight, eight and a half minutes, eight minutes, 45 seconds to get into orbit. And I, 
really breathtaking. I mean, the, the, the breath was taken out of me, and I couldn't breathe for 30 seconds because it's like there is beautiful planet Earth. So I've been spending a lot of time uh, talking to uh, uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers today, uh, and, and telling them that you know, planet Earth is my favorite planet. And it's like I'm not kidding you. I used to be a Mars guy and a Moon guy, uh, planetary scientist. I mean, I know all about those places. But um, but you know, now that I've seen planet Earth in space. Story number one. Anyone have any questions so far? Because I'm going to move into story number two, telling you what's sort of like the life support space station, and then uh, and then anything else. Any questions so far? Yes, sir. Oh, but they have a couch relief now, so they have to they have to 